We just, we are studying the book of Proverbs tonight, and um, if you would like to have a copy of any of our sermons or any of our Bible studies, uh, you can write to P.O. Box 1304, Catoosa, Oklahoma, 74015. May God rich, richly bless you and may you continue to join us as we learn our identity is in Christ and he is in us. And we learn how to seek the kingdom of, of God and his righteousness. All right, we have been studying the book of Proverbs. And bro Proverbs does a lot of repeating. And you may wonder, well, why does God repeat it? Why does he keep saying things over and over and over and over again in different ways? Well, because sometimes we don't get it one way, but we might get it another way. <laughs> so God knows us better than we know ourselves. I know there's verses that I have read in years past and read them recently or heard them preached on recently and I thought oh my goodness bing the light went on I understand that verse now I didn't see it that way before <laughs> and so uh, each of us uh, understands differently and at different times and so God has got stuff all throughout scriptures to help us to learn over and over how he thinks and the more we study and the more we uh, have conversation with him which we call prayer um, the more understanding we will have the more wisdom the more we will be lining up with how he wants us to be and when we ask Jesus into our heart he's living within us but we're still in a human body that has to do, has a human brain and has to do some learning. So we just uh, need to learn how to trust and obey God in every way and depend on him in every situation to lead, guide, and direct us the way we should go. And this is just part of, uh, part of it. So... Studying the word is a little bit, actually, it's a lot different than just reading. Um, actually, what we're doing is we are just kind of introducing the study because studying is going slower and looking at the words and the meaning of the words. And we look at three different versions of the Bible, but there's lots of versions out there. So if you have a hard time understanding one, there's try another one. There's got to be one out there that's easier for you to understand. There's so many of them. <coughs> Dave will be reading out of the King James Version, and Josie will be reading out of the New Life, and I will be, or the Living Word, the Living, Living Bible. Sorry, got that wrong. <laughs> there might be one out there that's in New Life, I don't know. But anyway, there's so many, I lost track of them all. And then I will be reading out of the Amplified. And then we will take turns reading different verses and then discuss what we get out of it. You might get something entirely different, and that's okay. We would encourage you to study. It's good to have a dictionary. It's good to have a Bible dictionary. Uh, you can find that all online if you don't want to look at a book. I like the books myself, and I got one up here. Um, so anyway, it's good to study. Sometimes these individual words don't mean what we thought they did. Um, and that sheds some new understanding added to whatever understanding we already have. So it's good to study, to show ourselves to be approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. And that's a quote, but I can't remember where in the Bible it is. I just know it's in there. So 
Uh, if you get it down in you, if you're better at remembering references, uh, you will probably be able to say where you found a scripture at. I cannot always remember the references. I might remember if it's Old Testament or New Testament. Uh, I might not have the words exact because it depends on which version you use as to how the words are. But if you have the meaning of it, then you're on the right track. Because God wants us to understand his viewpoint. He wants us to understand what he likes and what he doesn't like. He wants us to understand that we can trust him and that we can obey him and that all things work together for good for them that love the Lord. And we don't do these things to earn brownie points or to get a check mark or a star on some chart. Although when we were younger in Sunday school, they might have done that to encourage us to do it more. But we don't do it for that reason. We should be doing, we should be studying the word and seeking to do things God's way because we love him because he first loved us and he did so much for us. So now we will get on with it. We are ready to start on Proverbs chapter 26 today. <clears throat> and Lord willing, it's got 28 verses. We should be able to get through them um, before it gets too late. All right. Um, Dave, will you start reading in the King James uh, verses 1 through 9 in Proverbs chapter 26, please? As snow in summer, and as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemingly for a fool. As the bird be, as the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse cause less shall not come. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the ass, and a rod for the fool's back. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he, ha lest he be wise in his own conceit. He that sendeth a message by the hand of a fool cutteth off the feet, and drinketh damage. The legs of the lame are not equal, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. As he that bindeth a stone in a sling, so is he that giveth honor to a fool. As a thorn goeth up into the hand of a drunkard, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. Okay, and Josie, would you read yours? Honor doesn't go with fools any more than snow with summertime or rain with harvest time. An undeserved curse has no effect. Its intended victim will be no more harmed by it than by a sparrow or a swallow flitting through the sky. Guide a horse with a whip a donkey with a bridle, and a rebel with a rod to his back. When arguing with a rebel, don't use foolish arguments as he does, or you will become as <coughs> foolish as he is. Prick his conceit with silly replies. To trust a rebel to convey a message is as foolish as cutting off your feet and drinking poison. In the mouth of a fool, a proverb becomes as useless as a paralyzed leg. Honoring a rebel will backfire like a stone tied to a slingshot. A rebel will misapply an illustration so that its point will no more be felt than a thorn in the hand of a drunkard. Okay. Like snow in summer and like rain in harvest, so honor is not fitting for a self-confident fool. Like the sparrow in her wandering, like the swallow in her flying, 
so the causeless curse does not alight. A whip for the horse and a bridle for the donkey and a straight slender rod for the backs of self-confident fools. Answer not a self-confident fool according to his folly, lest you also be like him. Answer a self-confident fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes and conceit. He who sends a message by the hand of a fool cuts off the feet of satisfactory delivery and drinks the damage. <coughs> like the legs of a lame man, which hang loose, so is a parable in the mouth of a fool. Like he who binds a stone in a sling, so is he who gives honor to a self-confident fool. Like a thorn that goes without being felt into the hand of a drunken man, so is a proverb in the mouth of a self-confident fool. Now I'm going to open it up for comments. There's a lot there. <laughs> well, I guess in that one verse, um, um, let's see, which one it was. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it just shows you that you can't really argue with a fool. It, it says that you should just reply with silly answers, I mean, you know, instead of trying to reason him out, you know. Or figuring out. Mm -hmm. Fool can't be reasoned with, can it? Right. It's <laughs> just to reply with a silly reply. <coughs> and that will make him, it just says pricking, I don't know. Prick, and down here it says, his conceit with silly replies implied. Reply to fool as his folly requires. <laughs> I don't know. That's what prick is. <laughs> You have a comment, Dave? Well, either way you look at it, when you're dealing with a fool, things just aren't right. You know, like it's it's not in the summer, you don't expect to see snow. And the harvest you're trying to get the the crops to um you're trying to harvest them and rain just stops it all up and makes it not easy um and it goes on giving some other illustrations of <clears throat> how some things just don't go together some things are not just right um, a parable in the mouth of a fool doesn't make sense because they won't use it right. <laughs> um, it just looks like a rebel just does not understand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they... A rebel I don't want to understand. Or rebels no. refuse to understand. You tell them the grass is green, they're going to argue with you and tell you it's blue green or yellow green or anyway, they're going to be argumentative, trying to make it look and appear and sound like they know what they're talking about. Um. It's just not wise to take heed much to what a fool has to say because they will lead you the wrong direction. They're not dependable people when they speak. Uh, you can't count on them. Unfortunately, we have some people in authority over us in the government that are sounding similar to the descriptions we've heard. So uh, we just pray that God gets a hold of them and straightens out their thinking. <laughs> yeah, right. 
and their speech along with it. All right, let's go to verse 10 and read through 16. The great God that formed all things both rewardeth the fool and rewardeth transgressors. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit, there is more hope of a fool than of him. The slothful man saith, There is a lion in the way, a lion is in the streets. As the door turneth upon his hinges, so doth the slothful upon his bed. The slothful hideth his, his hand in his bosom, and grieveth him to bring it again to his mouth. The sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. Okay, Josie. The master may get better work from an untrained apprentice than from a skilled rebel. As a dog returns to his vomit, so a fool repeats his folly. There is one thing worse than a fool, and that is a man who is conceited. The lazy man won't go out and work. There might be a line outside, he says. He sticks to his bed like a door to its hinges. He is too tired even to lift his food from his dish to his mouth. Yet in his own opinion, he is smarter than seven wise men. <laughs> I like the way it words all that. But like an archer who wounds all, so is he who hires a fool or chance passerbys. As a dog returns to his vomit, so a fool returns to his folly. Do you see a man wise in his own eyes and conceit? There is more hope for a self-confident fool than for him. The sluggard says, there is a lion in the way. A lion is in the streets. As the door turns on its hinges, so does the lazy man move not from his place upon his bed. The slothful and self-indulgent buries his hand in his bosom. It distresses and wearies him to bring it again to his mouth. The sluggard is wiser in his own eyes and conceit than seven men who can render a reason and answer discreetly. All right, this ought to be interesting for our conversation for these verses. Who wants to talk first? Sounds like a description of all those people <laughs> who cannot get a job following orders, but they do get jobs making decisions. You got a comment? Well, um, well, they, they just won't listen to anybody, you know. They think they're smarter than anybody else. And so... I don't know. I guess they, it makes them tired, maybe, <laughs> to do all that thinking, you know. <laughs> it makes them lazy. Well, a long time ago when I was going to college to be a teacher, I ran across some people that were fools. A fool cannot be taught because they know it all in their eyes they know it all and you can't teach them a thing no matter how on the wrong path they are they will not listen they are bound to determine that their way is the only way and it's the best way and we learn from one another many times and from our experiences as well as from the things we have learned through books and teachers and so forth but when you have a person who's bound and determined that their way is the right way, and it's not, you, you might as well save your breath. You're not going to persuade them different, and they will suffer the consequences of their ways of thinking. That's what I get out of it. And um, 
the slothful is kind of cousin to the fool because when they're slothful they're being foolish they're not willing to do what is necessary to be done in a timely manner they don't want to do it that way and they don't want to do it in a timely way it's like they just want to do it when they want to do it if they want to do it but they still want the results they still want to eat food but they but if it takes too much effort to take lift that spoon up and put it in the dish and stick it to their mouth then they would expect somebody else to provide for them <laughs> you know it, it's kind of a silly illustration right there but it, it's basically describing the fool to the fullest he yeah. won't the fool will not do what is necessary to meet his own needs let alone his family needs or his friends needs uh he's got an excuse oh there's a lion out there uh what if i walk out my door and somebody loses control of their car and hits me you know i mean he loves to play that what if game if it gets him out of work so um he or she and so anyway uh (laughs) but yet he'll declare he knows he knows more than you so he's going to tell you how to do it whatever it is (laughs) (laughs) oh goodness you're wasting your time like i said if you try to change their thinking because they've already made up their mind they know better than you even if you're eating and they aren't because they didn't do what they had to do to get the food (laughs) they still think they know better (laughs) how ridiculous all right um Let's go on ahead and read 17 through the en- to the end, which is 28. And, um, and then if there's certain verses you want to read again over after we all get done reading our version, if there's certain verses you want to read again to make the point that you got out of it, that's okay during our comments because we've got plenty of time for comments, so we can do that. All right, uh, Dave, 17 through 28, please. He that passes by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him is like one that taketh a dog by the ears, as a madman who casteth firebrands, arrows, and death. So is the man that deceiveth his neighbor and saith, Am not I in sport? Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no table bearer, the strife ceaseth. As coals are to burning coals, and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. The words of a table bearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Burning lips in a wicked heart are like a pot shirt covered with silver dross. He that hateth dissembleth with his lips and layeth up deceit within him. When he speaketh fair, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Whose hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness shall be showed before the whole congregation. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. A lying tongue hath those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. A lot there. Okay, Josie? Yanking a dog's ears is no more foolish than interfering in an argument that isn't any of your business. A man who is caught lying to his neighbor and says, I was just fooling, is like a madman throwing around firebrands, arrows, and death. Fire goes out for lack of fuel, and tension disappears when gossip stops. A quarrelsome man starts fights as easily as a match sets fire to paper. Gossip is a dainty morsel eating eaten with great relish. Pretty words may hide a wicked heart, 
just as a pretty glaze covers a common clay pot. A man with hate in his heart may sound pleasant enough, but don't believe him, for he is cursing you in his heart. Though he pretends to be so kind, his hatred will finally come to light for all to see. The man who sets a trap for others will get caught in it himself. Roll a boulder down on someone and it will roll back and crush you. Flattering is a form of hatred and words cruelly. And w wounds cruelly. <laughs> okay. He who, passing by, stops to meddle with the strife that is none of his business is like one who takes a dog by the ears, like a madman who casts firebrands, arrows, and death. So is the man who deceives his neighbor and then says, Was I not joking? For lack of wood, the fire goes out, and where there is no whisperer, contention ceases. As coals are to hot embers, and as wood to fire, so is a quarrelsome man to inflame strife. The words of a whisperer or slanderer are like dainty morsels or words of sport to some, but to others they're like deadly wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the body or of the victim's nature. Burning lips, uttering insincere words of love, and a wicked heart are like an earthen vessel covered with the scum thrown off from molten silver, making it appear to be solid silver. He who hates pre pretends with his lips, but stores up deceit within himself. When he speaks kindly, do not trust him, for seven abominations are in his heart. Though his hatred covers itself with guile, his wickedness shall be op shown openly before the assembly. Whoever digs a pit for another man's feet shall fall into it himself, and he who rolls a stone up a height to do mischief, it will return upon him. A lying tongue hates those it wounds and crushes, and a flattering mouth works ruin. Comments? Would any of us be willing to grab a dog and start yanking on their ears? That'd kind of make the dog mad and want to bite us, wouldn't it? Well, that's what meddling in other people's business does. It stirs up trouble with capital letters. And that's on verse 17. Um, on 19, where it's talking about uh, where somebody says something and then says, well, did you not know I was joking? I have known children to do that, trying to get out of trouble. They would say something that deep down in their heart they meant, but they saw it was going to get them in trouble with the adult that was listening. And, and then they'd say, oh, I was just joking. <laughs> yeah, right. That's how you really felt, but you're in trouble. <laughs> well, um, that happens with not just kids, but grown-ups, too. Um, verse 20, I've experienced. Have you ever had somebody tell a lie about you? or one of your family members. You know, uh, if you don't give it anything to strip the fire, the fire goes out. I remember uh, when we lived in Haskell, there was a woman who loved to stir up trouble. And she came to me and she said, everybody says your husband has been unfaithful to you with so-and-so here in town. And I thought, I don't even know that woman. And I asked my husband later about it. He didn't know her either. But at the time that she, he was supposed to be seeing this other woman, <laughs> he, 
he was several states away. So when she told me that story, I didn't add to her fire. I just laughed. And I said, number one, anybody that knows us knows he wouldn't do that. Number two, my answer to them is he is at present time during the time when he's being accused of this, he is many states away working for his company making a delivery of asphalt. So if he is able to do both at the same time and be in two places at one time, doing two different things at one time, then so be it. Let him have at it. He must be more talented than any other human being in the world. <laughs> And she stopped right then and there and stopped spreading her terrible rumor. And, you know, uh, when someone tries to tell us something about somebody else, it's wise for us not to repeat it. We need to go to the source and find out the other side of the picture. And, and it doesn't need to be repeated anyway unless there is somebody that could be hurt if we didn't tell about it. But... Um, I've had people that stopped in their tracks when I said, huh, I wouldn't have thought they would have done that after they tried to pass their lies on to me. I'll just go and ask them tomorrow when I see them. Oh, don't ask them. Don't ask them. Well, because they didn't want it to be known that they were lying about them. <laughs> you know, so you can put a stop to that. Um, and that old state saying that was sticks and stones may break my bones and words can never hurt me I learned that as a child but it's not true they were trying to help me not let what people said bother me and it, they had good intentions by teaching me that little saying but words can help you for the I'm sorry, words can help you or hurt you for the rest of your life, depending on what is said. And sometimes the person who says it isn't meaning anything bad by it, but the listener and how they perceive what was said can still do some harm. And so um, we've got to be careful what we say to each other um, there's a child in our family. He's no longer a child. Uh, he grew up and got married and had a kid of his own and uh, has gone on to be with the Lord since then. But a teacher in kindergarten told him he would never learn how to read. Coming to find out he had a learning disability, and those who knew how to teach people with those learning disabilities taught him how to read very well, as a matter of fact. And so, you know, but for years, he was teased until we ran into that woman who knew how to teach him. Uh, he was teased about how he was dumb and stupid. And he wasn't dumb or stupid. He just had a different way of thinking. And when you knew how he thought, he could learn anything. And so um, we just need to be really careful about our words and being judgmental it talks about that in in other places in scriptures too about not judging people um and then um there's another place in scripture where it talks about flattery when someone is just really saying things that they think you'll like you can you can sense it you can almost sense that they don't mean a word they're saying. They're just trying to get on your good side, and they have an agenda for doing that. Um, but Scripture tells us to be careful of that. That's kind of like buying a piece of jewelry that you think is solid silver and finding out later that it's nickel, but it's been coated with silver. You know, um, it's not true. It's not what it leads you to believe. Um, so a person who is like that we are never to trust what they say if they start buttering you up I mean a word fitly spoken is, is good but it's not going to be with an agenda behind it 
it's not going to be to get on your good side so that you'll fall for something that's not good for you. So, um, anyway, that's what I got out of it. If anybody wants to add anything else to it, if anybody got anything else out of it, that's you go for it right now because there's a lot in there. That one chapter, ha each chapter has a lot of stuff in it. Well, uh, some people are just quarrelsome. Like 21, it's a, a quarrelsome man starts fights as easily as a match sets fire to paper. Well, some people, they are real quarrelsome, and uh, you just kind of have to choose your words, I guess, on that. And then in 20, um, 23, it says, Pretty words may hide a wicked heart just as pretty glaze covers a common clay pot. Well, some people, you know, really try to win you over with their pretty words, but then, then you know, it's easy for them because they just they don't really mean it. it just, it's a covering. <laughs> from their attitudes. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. Any more comments? Well, and for those listening, if there's any, uh, there is a way to comment underneath uh, what's on YouTube if you care to comment. And that is fine. Um, and again, I just want to encourage you to not just read, but to go a little slower and think about some of what's being said. And even if you don't get the full picture, you usually, when you stop and, and go slow mm -hmm. and think about what you've read, you glean more from it, more understanding that God would have you. And of course, it never, it's always good to pray and ask God for understanding before you start reading. Um, and we didn't do that, but um, that is a good thing to do because there are a lot of scriptures that are a little tricky to understand. It helps me to understand more when we read out of more than one version. Because some versions, the way they put it, I get it, and some I don't. And um, <coughs> uh, the living word, lots of times, I understand some stuff better out of because of the way they word it. Um, and same with the Amplified. Um, but yet, King James Version has a good meaning as well. And if you get one of those Bibles that, that are really in the old English where they use the these and thous and all that, um, I really have a hard time with that. But you're talk you're you're listening to someone who never did get get Shakespeare. I just when I had to study Shakespeare, it's like they had too much of the old English in there, and it was like speaking another language to my poor brain. So. <clears throat> um, and part of it might have been my attitude. I didn't really care for Shakespeare, but there's a lot of people out there that love Shakespeare. So that's okay. We don't have to agree on what we like and dislike. <laughs> I haven't found anything in scriptures about that unless we're liking things that are not pleasing to God, then, then he would be upset with us for that. All right, are there any prayer requests? 